Welcome to Embrace the Spiritual Podcast. Join friends Michelle and Dawn as they share tips on how you too can open your heart, raise your vibration, and reclaim your sovereignty. Hear what they have experienced and overcome in their spiritual journeys while navigating this expansive spiritual multiverse. Discover how they transform their soul lessons from ordinary into extraordinary. Follow, subscribe, and share. Embrace the spiritual on all podcast streaming services, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Go to EmbraceTheSpiritual.com for additional content and a list of upcoming episodes. To book an aura regression or raw Reiki session, contact Dawn on her website, alchemy-sacredsound.com, and Michelle on her website at energeticembrace.com. Welcome back. We are excited to bring you this episode that is all about heart discernment. And if you recall in season one, we did an episode around ego versus your higher self and kind of understanding how the two can be kind of mixed together where people aren't recognizing their higher self. And we want to take that concept or that set of concepts and take it one step further into heart discernment. So this is really about living in your heart space, making decisions somewhat like with that gut and heart brain where we want to get out of our thinking mind and get down into our heart to make decisions that are good for our highest purpose and our soul. There's so much of this, I think, right now in this spiritual community, as broad as it is, There are many people that are actually operating out of their heart space, and there's tons. Sadly, the balance is a lot of people that are quote-unquote spiritual leaders that are operating out of their ego mind. They have been puffed up by somebody saying, oh, wow, like you're on such a big mission, and you're channeling all these benevolent beings, and oh, you're so awesome, and all this stuff. If the person is not operating from their heart, they will love the attention and talk about themselves. It's one of my pet peeves. <laughs> Don knows this. We've talked about it. And it's interesting. It's not just a recent pet peeve. This has always been a pet peeve. And now I just understand it better is when people brag about themselves, that drives me bonkers because really what it's doing on an energetic level, it doesn't resonate with me. And that's why it's a pet peeve of mine is when people are in their ego and all puffed up and, oh, I'm getting all these messages and I don't agree with this person who is benevolent and is operating from their heart. That's a red flag, people. And we want to help maybe bring light to some of these situations that both Don and I have come across where we've interacted with these people And the more work you do on clearing your shadow work and clearing your traumas and all of this, it becomes easier to see. So it's a process. Be gentle with yourself. It might not be something that you can pick up right away. And even if you pick it up later, that's okay. Don't judge yourself. Don't don't beat yourself up saying, oh, I wish you would have seen that sooner. You're recognizing it now and that's important. As long as you're picking it up at some point that ooh, that situation really didn't feel right to me. And I don't know if I should be either interacting with that person any longer or listening to their content if they're more of a public figure. So it's kind of getting back to that gut intuition. So episode five in season one, we talked about your intuition and really trusting your gut for your heart discernment. Make that connection, drop out of your head, down into your heart and Start letting the energy of how you feel in another person's presence, not just the words that they're saying, because I think we get caught up in the words that people are saying and they sound all sexy and fun and enlightened and blah, blah, blah. But how does that person make you feel? I was listening to somebody share stories and I got so antsy, I could literally not sit in my seat. So my body was telling me, This information that's being shared was not resonating with me. It did not feel like the message was being shared from their heart. And that's why my body got antsy. So your body might be what tells you lots of empaths we feel in our bodies. So don't discount what your body is doing in the moment when you're listening to people. And for me, because I'm trying to understand them on a heart level, 
it doesn't make sense. So when you're listening to them and you're like, am I connecting to the, the dots to what they're saying? My brain goes, there's no connection. Why are you listening? And it's like, are you sure? And, you know, we always question like, am I just being, you know, like moody or judgmental? And then, you know, you listen. And then I always reflect back on the conversation and I realize, oh my God, this made no much sense. Like the sense that it was supposed to make, there was none to it. And I have come to realize that a lot of people who are not operating in their highest good, this is my warning system for when I'm around people who have extremely low vibration, ulterior motives, listen. And if it does not make sense and you can't put the pieces together, that means they're trying to con you. And it's the only way I can say it because I have family members who did that to other people. They would be like, oh, I have this wonderful product, blah, 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 but it's going to break and I'm going to make more money off of you. And in the end, they're energetically taking from you. Why would you want to give away your energy freely and your listening energy? Because that is an energy too. And sometimes it's just okay to be like, you know, I, I have to step away. Like, thank you. I love you. I honor you. I respect you. I'm leaving. Because we don't have to listen to them. We have choices. And it's okay to not want to listen. Maybe they're still on their journey and they're still figuring it out. But if they're not trying to change, you do not owe them anything to have to sit there and listen. And I'm talking about spiritual speakers. I get friends who'd be like, oh, you got to listen to this. And I've seen a lot of stuff that have like, especially from the old things uh, that were recorded in the 90s and 80s, looking with my heart and with my eyes now. And I know I've seen these people on TV and then looking at it on my phone, I can energetically see like the shifting of something in them. And I realized they were never, ever, ever in their heart center. And they made millions off of people, but how many people did they truly heal? And that makes me sad because I want everybody to heal. I want us all to be on the same profound level that you can be at all times where you're talking to your team and they're like, hey, you got to do this. You got to do that. Or, you know, something over here needs help. Why can't we all be at that level? We are here to help each other, not put somebody else on a platform and make you know, and look up to them like they're a God because they're not. They're just like us energetically. There's only one supreme source God, whatever you want to call it. And of course, we look up to it because it is where we came from. Yeah, that's certainly a lot of uh, programming that I dare say that pretty much everybody has some level of programming that we grew up with about who we are putting on that pedestal. And it could be a celebrity, it could be, as you say, a religious figurehead, it doesn't matter what it is. But check in, like Dawn said, check in with your heart, does that really make sense? Am I just doing it because I feel obligated? We talked about that last episode about feeling that obligation. If it doesn't feel right, don't be obligated. One of the things that we've kind of recently become aware of is if you're listening to somebody share channeled information or light language or something, be really careful. We found, I know I found that if we start checking out and not really paying attention after a while, it's probably your own higher self checking out because it doesn't want you to consciously absorb the information. Now, having said that, if you're watching something online and you find yourself checking out, stop whatever you're watching and don't continue because you don't want some subconscious messaging to be channeled to you as a result. And I mentioned light language. This is one area where I say you have to have the largest heart discernment ever because you do not know if that person is channeling benevolent light language or not. I tend not to listen to light language unless I've maybe met the person and know that they're coming from their heart space, then I would listen to it. But really, why do you need it? Why do you need somebody else's light language to help shift those things? We are powerful self healers, constantly giving away our power to people thinking the light language is going to heal us or do something. Yes, it can be very powerful coming from the right person. But but I'd say light language is probably one of the hardest things to discern because you actually do not know what you're listening to. The person likely doesn't even know what they're connecting to. And I'm not 
I'm kind of broad brushing here because I know there are people that speak light language that are really high vibrational beings. But interestingly enough, those aren't the people that are putting their light language out for everybody to listen to. They're actually keeping it sacred to themselves. So I want to put out a little bit of a caveat on that. If you are going to listen to it, I would recommend do your grounding, do your shielding. If you haven't already maybe looked at Aurora's shielding class that we have on our website under our bonus content, have a look at that. Or if you want to have an aura or a raw session from Dawn or I, we actually gift you as part of that some sacred alchemy symbols and teach you, which ultimately teaches you how to ground and shield yourself. So that's kind of a nice little gift that you get as part of having one of those sessions. So I would highly recommend that. One of the other things I wanted to bring up around heart discernment is people that aren't operating of their heart likely have some kind of entity attached, negative energy that's influencing them. It could be some ancestral thing that's coming through and not allowing that person to operate at their higher self perspective. Black magic. I'm going to say it, people. Whether you believe it or not, it's out there. And the challenge is, is that for most people, it's extremely hard, of course, to know whether you have something like that going on in your life. We can help you with that. Those are the services that we provide as part of us facilitating your self-healing. So listen to that. We are only facilitating your self-healing, but we can help you connect to the, your higher self and benevolent beings to understand what could be blocking you from having a better connection and better heart discernment. So it's not that you've done anything wrong because even Dawn and I, we've done a lot of work around this. I was surprised from my own perspective, how much I had to clear, even with all the work I'm doing. So it's not a one and done on any, I don't care what healing modality it is. It's never a one and done. It is a constant process of keeping yourself clear so that you can have that heart discernment. So no judgment, no judgment from us. Please don't judge yourself. We need to remove that. As soon as we judge ourselves, we're inviting those negative energies to getting closer to our energy because we're lowering our guard, so to speak, by feeling bad about ourselves or speaking bad about ourselves, judging ourselves. So we need to remove that from your vocabulary. And I'm glad that you brought up, I'm going to call it just magic of the negative kind, because I just had a session this week with someone and it is so tricky and I thought we had removed it and then it popped up again. We had did all this healing in a certain part of our body and we did like, the, we're doing like the final scans and it was like, there still, it is so hard because once you get exposed, you have to have the proper wording to remove it. It jumps timelines. It can see through things. It knows your weakness and it will take advantage of it. Your fear, your doubt, your negative emotions, it is knocking at your door once you let it in. And I know from experience, because I have had it in my reincarnation ancestral line, it is very hard to get rid of. But I have learned because of I know where it attacked when somebody has it in them, the weakness in my body from where it was will bother me. And it is my way of knowing this is going on. Thank you. I'm going to take care of it. So we're given these gifts with clearing ourselves. And because we are operating at the highest amount of love, and I'm starting to vibrate as I say this, we can see, sense, and feel in your sessions what is going on because we want you to connect divinely with source as we have connected divinely with source. It is a beautiful gift. We're just using our words to help you get there. You are the one who's really ultimately in charge because you are finding the clues that we are asking to clear. And it's a beautiful gift of give and take. And I highly recommend if you are at all intrigued, please read Aurora's books, listen to her YouTube ch channel, her Rumble channel. She is of pure love light, the highest love light that I have seen. And I have listened to a good amount of people out there. I've heard the robotic voices talking to me. And when I met her, it clicked. They're not in their heart. There's something else going on. I've heard channelings who I'm like, I don't understand what they're saying. And it clicked. Oh, they're not in their heart love light. I always knew it. Even as a little girl, there were, people were missing the heart love light. That's why I never felt love growing up because it was not even in my family tree. 
unfortunately. But now that it is, I love on my kids as much as I can, my animals, my friends, because I want them to grow into beautiful beings that I know that they are. Like there's no turning back for me. I'm here to help you and to wake you up in ways that are profound, that you will look back and you'll be like, I don't even know who that person was like two years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago. You'll be going to be completely different. And you might even look different too. If you look back at pictures, I know when I look back at pictures of myself, it, look, I look different. Yeah. Even now, you look so different from when Eureka, like you made a such a switch, you look different in your face, in your body, in your energy. <laughs> Oh, you're so sweet. But it's true her. that as you get these things cleared from your body, you do physically change. My husband's so sweet. He always says, you just keep looking younger and younger. But that's what happens is, well, I just think age is just a number anyway. So our soul is infinite. So really our counting of age is irrelevant. But it's a really good point that we can change on the physical aspect as well. And the amount of love that you actually feel in your heart for others is a sign that you're shifting into that heart discernment. When you can have unconditional love, and I know that's a tough one for people. I'm thinking, oh yeah, right. I used to think that, and I've said this in past episodes. But when you can truly want the best for people, no matter what, and we're not judging people for what's happened, because a lot of times, as I said, we don't even realize that these things are part of us. We go into surgery, we have, we're in the hospital, we've had injuries. All of these things can lower our energy vibration and allow energies that aren't high vibration whatever you want to call them, can come try to take some of that energy from you. I know in looking back, there's some situations probably going back seven years ago now. And this one lady that was in my husband's business, and I'm not going to share much of the story because it's just a story at the end of the day and there's lessons in there. But I did not resonate with her right from the beginning. And I knew something was off and, you know, because everybody else, oh yeah, she's such a fun person, nah, 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 whatever. I did not feel good about her. And I was right. She was said terrible things about me through eating. I had the guts to say it to my face. She was trying to discredit me, put me down. Well, she did say some things to other people. And at the time, it was quite upsetting that I couldn't just lose my crap all over her. Call her out for who she really was, because I could see it like there's no tomorrow. And I knew she was not a good person. Very narcissistic, but of course, put on the show for everybody else. So this is just one specific example. But there are people like that that are spiritual, they call themselves gurus and leaders that are very narcissistic and they put on one face for the audience and the people they're interacting with. And there's something completely different behind the curtains, so to speak. Some of this heart discernment, yes, you're feeling it. I'm talking about feeling it in your body because that's how I felt it. And I was right about her. And it's no surprise, but I was made to second guess my own intuition. And that's one of the big lessons I've, I know that this is my lifetime learning is trust in myself, trust in others, but really it's trust in myself. And I was made to question it. And I allowed people to allow the stories in that caused my mistrust, put it that way. Anyways, years later, we find this beautiful aura hypnosis healing technique. And guess what? She put some of that little negative uh, magic on me and was trying to infringe on me years later. So here's the thing, folks, these people that have these negative agendas or things in them, probably 90% of them, maybe 80, don't even realize that is in them. That is the dangerous part. There are some people that know exactly what they are and who they are, and they are out to take advantage of you and take your money for courses and whatever they can do to feed their ego and their in the spotlight kind of thing. But the majority of people don't even realize that this is influencing them. So when I look back at this person in, in particular, and I'm not saying that I ever wish to see this person ever in my life. I've got lots of shields up, so I will never run into her again. But I can look back now from a heart perspective and say, wow, I now see 
what she couldn't see in herself. And all you can do is, you know, send love to the situation, whether you want the person, it doesn't matter because send love to the situation that it gave me a lesson. I learned my lesson from it and wish them well. Doesn't mean you have to have the person in your life, but I was able to use my heart discernment to change the narrative around the story and the situation so that I could see from a heart perspective what the situation was really about. And so when you can be in that heart discernment, that's what it is, is you're looking at situations from the heart perspective, because it's ultimately how you're going to heal. You can look at it, get the mind out. Yes, a whole bunch of crap happened. It was really nasty and negative, but that's not the story I'm going to proceed with. The story is, it was there to teach me a lesson. And I hope that person gets help for what they're dealing with. They likely never will. And that's okay, because that's that's not my responsibility. So, so that's another message. Don't take responsibility for those other people. We can only take responsibility for ourselves, how we deal with situations, how we react with situations. And when we can react from a heart perspective, then we can release it. I'm so glad that you mentioned that because it is how they are behind the scenes. I know, I have family members, friendly to your face, super like you would be like, oh, I would totally trust them with, you know, my children and whatever, you know, with my money. They are the least trustworthy people ever. It is so easy to put on a mask. All you have to do is like say some nice kind words and you're in. How many people are like, oh my God, I would totally give you the keys to my house and X, Y, Z. That should be a warning sign because we have been so conditioned to think that just because you're nice, you're trustworthy. That is so not true. It is like the least, if they're super nice, your warning sign should say, are they really that nice? Are they coming from a le- a place of love? We need to start questioning. I mean, I even, you know, I question my husband and my daughter sometimes because I'm like, are you really coming from a place of love? Are you trying to manipulate me? And I refuse to be manipulated. You know, if you ask me to do something for you, I will do it. But if you're tr- going to go around the, the long way and try to get me to do something, I'm going to dig my heels in and say, absolutely not. You're trying to be sneaky and infringe on my free will. <laughs> So, (laughs) you know, how are they going about doing things? And I had a a boss and if I was her mother, I would have disowned her. How she would talk to her mother on the phone and I would be stuck in the office with her working on stuff. It was horrible. How could you talk to your mother like that? She had no love in her heart for herself, her children. She was getting married and she's like, mom, I don't care if you wear a paper sack. I'm not going shopping with you. Who would say that? Like, this is super far from heart discernment. This is like living in that ego where my life is more important than yours. And it's all about me. It's a narcissism that you see with celebrities and people who have been put up on this pedestal and they think, oh, you owe me. Like I worked hard, I got here. And maybe they really didn't work that hard, you know, because sometimes there's, you just have to be, meet the right person who's like, I will take part of your soul and we'll put you everywhere. So I always question when we get messages, because we do get messages, are they really in their heart for, you know, doing this? Or are they trying to manipulate us because they want to take part of our loving dance on things? Look at everything through different eyes. Calm your mind. Go into a situation with no judgment. Just know that you're there for your highest good and are the people that you're interacting with for your highest good. Because if they aren't, you need to leave. And you can find people who are there for your highest good. And it's all a lesson. And it's okay if you make mistakes. We've all made mistakes. I mean, if I counted the mistakes on my hand, I would probably have three books full. (laughs) With a fourth one, you know, being written currently. (laughs) And that's okay. Life is about learning. And I'm not going to repeat that mistake. I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to do better. Next time is the time that I'm going to recognize it for the instant that it happens and step away from that script that I've pre-written out because I'm now healing myself. I'm rewriting all this programming that we've been taught and being nice is one of them. Absolutely. I wanted to kind of give a, not necessarily a checklist, but a little bit of things we've talked about that you can keep an eye open for. When 
people are passive aggressive, as Don said, or if they're always talking about themselves, whether you ask them about themselves or not, and maybe they get jealous easily and don't want to share friends or all of those things are not operating from your heart. People calling themselves gurus or experts, that would suggest that you know absolutely everything about your field. And you might think you do, but there's always something to learn. If we're not in that learning space, basically means we're not growing. And when you're not growing, that's where we can become complacent. And when we become complacent, Complacent, that's when we can attract these negative things to attach to our energy. We really want you to keep your energy sacred to yourself. Said this many times, keep your BS filter up and observe. I was always an observer. I sat back and watched situations and I could peg people for what they really were, even though they were putting on a different front in the public eye. I'm not going to be friends with somebody just to be friends with somebody. I think that's one of the biggest disservices we can do ourselves and for others is to say, just because this person's in your business or you work with them or yeah, coworker in whatever capacity that could be, doesn't mean you have to give your energy away and be all in friends, quote unquote, with this person. You can be colleagues and coworkers without giving away your sovereignty and opening yourself up to anything negative in them infringing upon you. One of the other things you can do is look into somebody's eyes. If their eyes are really dark, and I'm not talking about brown eyed people that, you know, <laughs> Have dark eyes anyways, but you can see if there's that sparkle in their eyes or if they're a little bit kind of checked out or, you know, maybe they have like little squinty eyes, something different. Look at their eyes. If it feels off, honor that. Honor what you're getting. Don't feel obligated. We'll say this over and over again. Don't feel obligated because you're giving away your power when you feel like you have to be friends with somebody. Be polite to the perspective of that it doesn't infringe upon yourself. Not the programming polite that we're trying to shed some of this programming, well, all of the programming, hopefully, that we've been put up. But you don't have to be rude and ignorant, not engage with the person. You can walk away, say, no, I'm good. It's not vibing with me. Get up, go to the bathroom, whatever you have to do to excuse yourself from the situation, then do that. Another point that I wanted to make was around these spiritual teachers that we go to see in person. We've heard stories, and I think we've shared these stories about kind of popular spiritual figures that are infringing on people in their dreams. So by going to see these speakers in person, you are giving your permission right? Because you've paid for the ticket or whatever and gone to this event. You have to shield yourself. You have to set up your boundaries so that you can protect yourself in those large situations. Because yes, we want to check out their eyes, but we also want to be careful that by looking at them, that their eyes are not trying to connect in with us in a negative way. I'm not going to name names because we don't want any energetic attacks on ourselves. There's many speakers that I will never go see again. There is one gentleman that I, I'll say that I was in Sedona. He, he wasn't a resident there, but he was there speaking at a conference. I got anxiety listening to him. He talked so fast. And it's like we were saying earlier, where you kind of check out and you don't even really know what he's saying because he was speaking so fast that it was like he was trying to just suck everybody in by talking that quickly. And I just did not have a good feeling about him. So I honored that. I'll never go see that person again. And that same person, years later, we find out is infringing on people and going into their dreams. So be really careful. I would say as well with guided meditations that you're listening to at night, that person, I know this same gentleman does guided meditations. And yeah, that is not the person you want to be listening to as you go to sleep because you're basically inviting them into your dream time where you are energetically more vulnerable. So be mindful. I know lots of people follow these speakers to all the different venues. Well, what are they really teaching you? Are you really into integrating and implementing what they're teaching you anyways? Or do you just like the energy of it and want to get pumped up? Well, that should be kind of some red flags for yourself. If you feel that you need that to pump you up, then there's some work to do on yourself. 
And that's okay, not a judgment. But if we don't work on ourselves, then we're not going to be able to delayer these things that are stopping us from living in our heart and viewing the world from a heart space. And I was thinking when you're, you know, giving the look into the eyes, smiling and laughing, that is a good thing. Do these people smile when they talk? Do they laugh? And is it the fake laughter? Kind of like I have, this is a point where I'm supposed to be laughing and I will laugh. Like, do you feel like the urge to laugh with them? If you don't, they're not, it's not heart centered and beware because those who fake laugh and they want you to join in. Cause that's another, I feel, I feel like that's another trick. Like, you know, that I smile and I, I know I'm guilty cause I have a had a teeth problems. So I feel like I've been doing um, a TMJ protocol to help straighten my teeth. And it is hard for me to smile right now because I am trying to loosen my mouth muscles. Again, it's a lot of healing that needs to be done. It's from a past life that has carried through. And I have a hard time smiling. And it's hard for me to like keep that smile too. So I sometimes like, I can feel my jaw going like, oh, but I do laugh. Michelle knows that because when we laugh, we laugh to the point of crying. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, what kind of laughter and and smiling are people giving off when they're talking, giving a lecture? How is the tone of their voice? Do they sound like a robot? That is a, should be an instant. Are they really real? Because I have heard those AI voices on those Instagram videos and I'm so done with them. I'm like, can we just do real voices? I miss the tone. I miss the, 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 you know, you can tell they're real people. There's life behind it. There's laughter. There's love. I'm so done with the people who are on the robotic, I'm going through my life. It is, I'm trying to sell you my product and I'm going to talk like this and I want you to listen to my meditations and I want you to listen to my lectures, but I have no soul because I've sold it. And there's no love in my life because I can't even smile when I'm doing what I am supposedly motivated to do. Listen, the clues are there. We're just reverberating what should be obvious because, you know, we've seen it and nobody pointed it out to us. We decided, oh my God, we have to talk about this because heart discernment, we're going into 2024. It is a big year here in the United States. I'm going to be married for 28 years. So you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> the energies are changing daily. Are you going to be part of that change or are you going to let the old suck you in and keep you from growing? It is your choice. And I would love for you to join us, but it is your choice. You have free will. And I love that you are using it to whatever extent you are. So please think about what we mentioned today. It took me a while to realize what is going on. And now that I know, I want to spread the word so others can step up quicker than I did in the you know evolution of mind, body, and heart discernment. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, each of our souls is here to learn a lesson. We all have different lessons and different things that we signed up to experience in this lifetime. Because we're not aware of that until you do some work and become aware of that, it can be hard to navigate these situations. And that's why we love doing this podcast. Even our podcast, we don't have a set agenda of we're talking about this next week. Sometimes we do, but we feel into what is kind of needed in the collective and what needs to be heard and shared. And then that's what we share with you. And it's not about skipping over lessons that you still need to learn. We're just trying to help take out the noise of the equation. The stuff that you really don't need to spend a lot of effort clearing, I guess, is the best word. I was kind of at a loss of what word to really use because we need to clear the stuff. It's like I'm getting the image of like a skimmer that you do in the pool to pick up the leaves. That's what we're helping. We're helping you get the leaves out of the way so that you can see the clearer water. That's really what it is. It's all, some of it's background noise, some of it's more obvious. And both Dawn and I do Akashic readings. Akashic readings are great tools that we can help facilitate the exchange of information to you really from your guides and your Akashic team. And we're just bringing that message in and sharing it to you. But we can help remove, help you identify those things that you need to sort through a lot faster. You know, if I could have got some of this information sooner, I could have gotten through some of the lessons quicker. So it's not that I would have skipped over lessons because if I didn't learn the lesson 
see if see it for what it was, the lesson would have just come back in a different way. So you can't can't ever skip lessons. We're not talking about shortcuts here, but we want to be able to assist you in whatever way we can so that you can come into your heart because when you are operating from your heart, it is a beautiful thing. It's not that we condone people that are doing nefarious things. That's not what living in your heart is. It's about seeing situations for what they truly are, not taking ownership of them, not taking responsibility or accountability for them. It's an awareness of your own body and your system and what you're allowing in and what you're allowing to stay in your heart. And our next episode is Earth Healing and How to Heal Gaia. And she wants me to start with go hug a tree. They want your love, they need your love, and you need what they can help you to heal yourself. So it is a symbiotic relationship with nature. Step out into the world and start hugging trees. They want it and they're waiting for you. Follow, subscribe, and share. Embrace the spiritual on all podcast streaming services, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Go to EmbraceTheSpiritual.com for additional content and a list of upcoming episodes. To book an aura regression or raw Reiki session, contact Dawn on her website, alchemy-sacredsound.com, and Michelle on her website at energeticembrace.com. Infinite love and gratitude. Thank you for joining us.